the cylinder holders are going to be quite a piece with a hole drilled at an angle to later hold the valve gear and uh, what's most important is that this hole is exactly the same height for both of them. Er, this will probably also be a nice piece to machine out on the lathe because I don't have a 29mm reamer and uh, we're going to leave as much meat on here beforehand because I don't want to squish this out of round in the four-jaw chuck. And once we've got all the holes drilled and all the critical aspects here done, done then we can start sawing out the contour around it to make it sleek enough to fit inside the cylinder cover later on. The crosshead guide on the 512 was purely decorative. With this one, however, because it's got a rather flimsy connecting rod and the stroke is so long and the piston is probably quite powerful, I want to actually make this function. So the 24mm hole is going to have to be a good one and then we're going to make a close fit to the crosshead and to keep everything aligned, well, I made these plans a while ago, so I thought, huh? You're actually just going over the bolt circle and then make this diameter not even register in those 24 millimeters to assure concentricity? Well, yes, I have actually decided to leave it that way because with the bolt holes I'll be able to shift this around to a place where this will fit properly and align nicely and uh, not have to bother with making things too precise. You see, if I made this boss here 24, made the other one fit, and then some error in concentricity would sneak into here, like the plane face not being exactly aligned, or the hole in the middle not aligning perfectly, for whatever reason, then I'll just have to, you know, throw it in the bin. So I'm going to call this the AK-47 principle, make this as rough a tolerance as possible and keep a little bit in mind while adjusting it to make it good, tighten it down nicely and forget about it, maybe pin it down, I don't even know.
With that all installed, now of course I need to know whether the crosshead guide and the piston rod are aligned. And there is no better way than to actually make the crosshead. I've got just the right piece of material, which unfortunately sticks out a little long. Luckily, I've now got a steady rest. It's not particularly made for the MyFord, so I had to do a little bit of adaptation to make it fit. Um, here we go, side project. Oh, surprise, surprise, it is moving nice and freely, so we're moving on. From here we're at a crossroads. It is really tempting to make the linkages to connect the flywheel to the piston and have something that chooches back and forth when we rotate the wheel. However, I think it's nicer to make the valve rods now and complete the cylinder as a unit and then conclude this video with that. Now comes the moment of big reveal of how this thing will actually work. See these valve rods I just made have the standard undercut for a steam passage and they've got a hole drilled right down the center and then a cross hole to link the two. And what will happen is steam gets right down the center here through this T-piece di distributed to the back and the front and enter the valve block from the lower half. And when the eccentric guides the cutout on the valve rod to be the height of the tube, then the steam is going to get into the undercut, down through the center hole, and diverted downwards into the cylinder, pushes the piston back. And when the eccentric pulls the rod back up again, to meet up with the height of the exhaust port right here, well, then the steam can get pushed out in the bottom of the valve, out through the cross hole, through the undercut and the exhaust port. It's so elegant and simple, I would have never thought of it, and there really is no other way to put it than it's genius. I'll now make the domes which the valve rod and spring sits inside. I've decided not to make my life unnecessarily hard and immediately combine the small little oilers which get set on top right into the dome and make it one single piece. Seems that he's there as the day.
day is closing On his knees there I hear him proposing He's not present Still it's pleasant Just imagine that it's true Now that we have all this together, I'll make the metal cover to go around and hide all these cruel spots and make a nice cylindrical piece out of this. And we'll deal with the connecting bits that will make all this move up and down in the next part, okay? There we go. Took a bit of fiddling, but the cover is on. I found out that I didn't work quite centered, so I had to do a little bit of adaptation work. But uh, all in all, I'm satisfied with the result. So um, that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed and uh, tune in next time when we tackle the levers and eccentrics and connection shaft and whatnot. See you guys, bye bye!